Okay. Uh, okay, we have a cylinder that's cut from a solid sphere. Given that the cylinder has a height of 2h, what is the radius of the... Sorry, the radius of the sphere is 3. Ah, I think I see it. Would everybody agree that the center of the cylinder is also the center of the sphere? Alright, so uh, did anybody use Pythagoras? And obviously, you're half in the, the h value half, isn't it? So that'll just be h. So did anybody get a 3 squared equals h squared plus r squared? And then uh, h squared equals 9 minus r squared? And then h equals the square root of 9 minus r squared? Ah, oh. <laughs> so you get the radius in terms of h. So we felt, yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's go back to the second last step, is it? And actually, the very first step. And instead, just move h over instead. Okay. And radius on its own is Newton 9 minus h squared. Kill it, huh? All right. And. Uh, No, done. All right. Can show that the volume V of the cylinder is this. No bother. Uh, volume of a cylinder is pi r squared h. Volume, therefore, is going to be pi. Now, we're going to square this out. I'm going to square it out. I actually get 9 minus. So 9 minus h squared is r squared. And then you have h there. And then what we're going to get is uh, 9 pi h. Actually, I'm going to have to leave it. Oh, I, I made a mistake there. The height is actually not h, it's 2h. Because that's what it calls in this question. So I think we actually already have the answer there. 2 pi h, 9 minus h squared. You see what that? Find the maximum volume. Uh, I'm just going to multiply it out. You cut it. Who did the product rule? Then anyway, we do the product rule, that's that's you and that's V. Oh, I also made one other mistake. See that squared? It should be on D. Inside of the bracket, not D. Outside. Okay. So who just multiplied it out first? Then dealt with it after that. Yeah. So 18 pi h minus what's it there? 2 pi h squared? Oops has two turning points, doesn't it? So we're going to have to prove that it's a maximum, okay? So we're going to have to do the second derivative as well while we're at it. So, the V to H ends up to be 18 pi. And then multiply that and you get 6 pi H squared. All that equals 0. Uh, factorize out 6 pi. What are you left with? P minus h squared. Now, this implies that h squared equals 3. Can it be minus root 3? So there is only one answer then, isn't it? Plus root 3. Uh, if you were to get the second derivative, you can see that it's going to be be minus minus 12 pi h which is always negative all right and we got the value because it just wants the maximum volume now doesn't it so get your original equation which is this one here and what do i do replace h with root 3. okay get your original equation oh no you don't Replace h with root 3, yeah? So, uh, 2 pi root 3, uh, 9 minus root 3 squared is 3. And then that's 6, that's 12. I got 12 root 3 pi. Anybody getting decimals? No? Good. And here's cubed. All right, that is uh, 13 done. Now I'm on to 15.
Mm -hmm. Alrighty. So I'm doing 15, okay? 15. We have an N shaped curve. We know where it crosses, don't we? Where does it cross? Anybody know? How do I know that's 6 0? That's 0 0. Huh? Uh, if you just solve equal to 0. Solve your function equal to zero, where the y value is zero, and then you factorize out minus x, and you get uh, x minus six. Then you, you get x equals plus six, and x equals zero. That's your few points there. Okay, so I don't know if you if you want that, but it's going to get it anyway. Express, sorry, express the coherence of p in terms of x only. All right, that's handy enough. See the way the point is on the curve, it means its y value is minus the x value squared plus 6 times the x value. So therefore the coordinates of p are x and minus x squared plus 6x squared. That was handy enough. Express the area of the triangle A, 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 B, P. Now, what's the deal with A? Has coordinates x distance, whatever that thing is. Anybody happy with x zero? Why is it x zero? Because it's directly underneath x y. All right. So for those who don't really get that, if that was six three, that would have to be six zero. All right. Now. What can you tell me about the length of the base? It's 6 minus x. So for example, if, if that was 2, 0 and that's 6, 0, the length would be 4. It's the bigger x value minus the smaller x value. So what's that give me? Uh, 6 minus x for the base. What's the height? The height is the y value. So what's the y value? Anybody? Yeah, minus x squared plus 6x. And to get the area of this uh, triangle, we're going to do a half base times height. Anybody get this part? It's fair play. Good job, good job. All right, let's multiply this out. Minus six uh, x squared plus thirty six x minus x cubed minus six x squared all divided by two uh, minus twelve x squared divided by two. Oh, let me see. I'm just going to do this in order. Area is minus a half x cubed minus 6x squared plus 18x. And we get that. Okay. I have to find the maximum area. So what does that mean? Differentiate and put it equal to 0. Uh, okay. And what we get, bring the 3 to the front. So minus 3 over 2 x2 minus 12x plus 18. Yo. Is it? Yes, it is. Thank you, uh, Brian. Thanks very much. And then that equals zero, doesn't it? Now, multiply everything by 2. What will that do? 3x squared minus 24x plus, what's it, 36, divide everything by 3, two answers, minus 2 minus 6, x equals 2, x equals 6, 
Uh, to be honest, whichever one's the maximum will just have the bigger value, won't it? Do you agree with that? The maximum area will have the bigger value for area. So what I'm thinking is, why don't we just get the uh, the formula, the original formula? This. Put them both in and see whichever one gives me the bigger area is the correct answer. I think it's likely to be six, but we should probably test both of them. So will somebody do two cubes for me? And the other person do six. Whatever that other person is. Go on, Charlie. Two cubed is four. The whole thing. Like the whole pharma. Yeah, it's just do the whole formula and let me know what you get. Hard to know. I think the six is going to be bigger than the two. But you can't guarantee it. Anybody know which one it is? Sixteen for the two. And the six. Why can't it zero? Which one? For the two. Oh, so the maximum is two sixteen. So an area of sixteen for an x value of two. So sixteen when x equals two. Am I right with that? You good? All right. Who got that one out? Alright guys, a beam of uh, 16, I'm doing 16 now, a beam has a rectangular cross section of depth x and width y, so that essentially means that, yeah it's just going to be like x and y. The strength s of the beam is given by 5x squared y. The perimeter of the cross section of the beam is 120. Alright, that's handy then. Then we know that 2x plus 2y equals 120. And then we know that 2y equals 120 minus 2x. y equals 60 minus x. So that's answer to part one. The answer to part two is so about your y. So the strength is given by 5x squared times y, 60 minus x, which is 300x squared minus 5x cubed. What are the possible values of x? Does it want to be the, as strong as possible, or what is it? What are the possible values for x? Let's try and think. Is that an inequality question where x has to be bigger than zero? Because it has no strength, it basically doesn't exist. That's how they did it, was it? So, uh, let's. It makes no sense unless strength is bigger than zero, or at least bigger than or equal to zero. Okay, probably bigger than zero. Oh, yeah. All right, guys. So, S is bigger than zero, okay? So, this means that if you have any value uh, of the X has to be bigger than zero, or it makes sense, because you can't have a minus width. Okay, but then x also has to be smaller than 60 because if it's anything above 60, the strength will become negative. All right, good job. Now, what are the values for x and y which give the strongest beam? So we're looking for strength to be a maximum. Does that make sense? Maximum strength. All right, so we're going to do the ADX. And we do the ADX, we differentiate that, and what do we get? 600x minus 
15x squared, yeah. Then what do we do after that? Equal to zero. Divide with 15x and you're left with 40 minus x. Either x equals zero, which means that there's no width or no length, which means that the rectangle doesn't exist, or x equals 40. 40 is the only value, therefore it must be the maximum. Second derivative. Second derivative would be uh, 600 minus 30x. Hmm. Give me a second there. Second derivative is 600 minus. It's oh yeah, minus 1,200. So it would be negative. So yeah, it's definitely a. If you did a second derivative and solving 40, it's negative, which makes it okay. So uh, we know the x value is 40. This means that the y value must be 40, the y value must be 20. The 60 minus 40 is 20. If the cross sectional depth of the beam must be less than 19 centimeters, find the what? Find the, new, find the maximum strength of the beam. It must be less than 19. Why well, can't be 40 anymore? All right, now, if I was, if I was putting my thinking hat on in the exam and I was a bit panicky going, I don't really know how to do this. Like you have to find the maximum that's not the maximum, you get what I'm saying? So you could always draw the graph out, do a sketch of the curve, okay? And what you could do is uh, menu setup, 300 x squared minus, 5x cubed okay start at 0 and that went uh, and then 19 yeah you're right okay step of 1 surely it'd be x equals 19 because it's on its way up to the maximum well 18.999 That's sort of proves it, doesn't it? It's going to be the closest value to 19 you can get that you're allowed to use. What's the answer in the back say? Oh, sorry. So being, so being 19, but it has to be smaller than 19, doesn't it? Yeah, it does so being 19 and you get 74,000 ants. But technically, you're not allowed that, so it has to be just underneath 74,000 and. But because if you subbed in 18.9999999999, it'd be very, very close to that, wouldn't it? So all you do is sub in 19 into your original formula, and you get 74,000 and. Yeah. Table function's a great thing. And you get 74,000 and. Right, good job. That's it.